Hello, Sarah Hager. Hi, Helen, how are you? Uh, I am good. It is, um, it's England, it's raining, it's supposed to be the middle of summer, but such is life. But thank you ever so much for making time to talk to us. I know how busy you are with um, with, your, with your own work with the um, ex-Muslims of South America. <laughs> I know how busy you are with your own work with, uh, with ex-Muslims in North America. So um, I, I really appreciate you taking time to speak to us because quite a few of our clients are um, liberal Muslims or feminist Muslims, LGBT Muslims, or particularly ex-Muslims. Mm -hmm. And they are coming to us with particular problems that are arising in their workplace, um, in their universities and in their children's schools that are counteracting the work that they themselves are trying to do um, to, to promote the liberal humanist values that, that bring people to counterweight. You, of course, have, have seen this, this problem arise time and time again, and I, I doubt it surprises you. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, and, and I think that the work that counterweight is doing here is, I mean, uh, I, I can't, uh, I wish it was the kind of organization that was around when I was experiencing these things for the first time before I really understood what was happening. I remember uh, first, uh, you know, getting involved in reform work and, and, and talking about ex-Muslims and the need for acceptance of religious dissent in Muslim communities. And I remember uh, that I was baffled by the reaction of other liberals or people who I thought were liberals at the time. And I didn't really understand what was happening. And it took me several years of investigation on my own. And, you know, it was a quite, it was a difficult task. Um, and, uh, you know, it took a long time and a lot of heartbreak to get to. And it would have been so wonderful to have an organization like Counterweight helping me understand exactly what's going on and empowering me um, with, you know, tools to, to take it on uh, the best that I can. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, I, I think I, um, what, one of the cases that, that we had that, that was just particularly enraging to me was a young scientist who had put a lot of work in, uh, he'd come from a North African um, a conservative um, Muslim community and he'd had great difficulty in being a liberal humanist there he had stood up for female scientists he had stood up for LGBT people he had opposed anti-semitism um, but he'd faced a lot of um, pushback for this a lot of danger for this and so largely he'd had to kind of um, self-censor mm -hmm. on moving to a western country he he believed that he would be able to be a liberal humanist, to stand up for gender equality, for LGBT equality. And that, that isn't what he found. Mm -hmm. He found himself penalised for believing himself to be privileged, um, which economically he was. He came from a very wealthy background. Mm -hmm. And for not um, expressing the right views about having experienced Islamophobia um, or racism, Mm -hmm. um, for not having, for, he just simply didn't understand the critical social justice ideas or what anybody was talking about. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was such a colonialist attitude in the end that I felt they were expecting this individual to take on this Western ideology mm -hmm. and just, and just speak it. And, and I expect you, you, you deal with, with people um, coming up against this all of, all the time and just trying to to navigate it and and how how would you advise us to to help clients like this? I, I, this case seems to have worked. We we essentially talked him through his interview and he passed, mm -hmm. but it, it's a struggle. <laughs> it's absolutely a struggle. I think the way that you phrased it that it is in in the end it's a it's kind of a colonial mindset. Um, I mean that that speaks to me. I think that uh, there. It, you know, if if anything is a Western ideology, it is you know critical social justice. If anything is you know cultural cultural imperialism, it is this you know ham-fisted uh, dogmatic approach um, forcing this worldview, this framework of of self-conception, of uh, understanding the world 
on everyone, you know, including people who just who disagree. They come from different walks of life. They have a different way of of looking at the world. Uh, maybe one that that was harkens back to an older era of liberalism here. Um, but in any case, it's it's it, these people find themselves often rejected um, in the climate, in the liberal climate right now, or what people that call themselves liberals. It's 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 hard with the terminology here because they would self describe, you know, they would they would think that they are liberals or they're progressives, but I don't view them that way at all. No. Um, and I've I've uh, worked with so many people who have um, felt this way, who felt, um, you know, when they entered this, there was a certain expectation of the kind of uh, you know, allies that they would receive of the fact that, you know, here in the West, we, we supposedly love inquiry. We're open, we have, we have, uh, we're an open society. We have freedom of speech, we have freedom of thought. And then they find that actually it's, it's, it's quite rigid um, in, in at least certain parts of the, the Western cultural world. Um, you know, uh, academic institutions, cultural institutions, they're often very rigid and very, uh, in, the, in their thinking and have an, an orthodoxy mm -hmm. um, and find themselves constrained again and finding themselves in a, in a place similar to what they had escaped with, uh, you know, religious um, conservatism. Mm -hmm. um, and so this is, a, this is it, it's a constant experience for ex-Muslims, um, for many ex-Muslims, many of us, most of us, um, you know, we did a survey in Exclusive North America recently of our client base of the, our, our community members and the vast, vast majority of them uh, said that they were uh, liberal, very liberal or, 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 or just, you know, mainstream liberals. But in any case, they were just mostly, they were people of the left. Um, and it's these same people of the left that are finding themselves um, unwelcome and they're finding their, their viewpoint and their input and uh, their interesting, you know, heterodox ideas rejected. Mm. Um, and it's quite, um, it's really dispiriting for a lot of them. Yeah, the, 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 this, is, this is the account that, that we're hearing repeatedly as well. There's a, a silencing of, of diverse viewpoints. We, we hear it too from, um, particularly from, from African-Americans who say they're, mm -hmm. they're simply not given the same access to the marketplace of ideas but because there, there's a particular one that they're supposed to have and if if they don't they are a, a traitor so I, I will finish with one question there, there's um, a new inquiry that, that I'm dealing with um, it's uh, a parent whose uh, daughter is now doing a class on Islam and feminism where she is being um, uh, taught that um, the burqa is the most feminist and empowering thing in the world ever, mm -hmm. while um, she herself um, intends never to wear um, a hijab or, or anything like this for feminist reasons. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, the mother is wondering how, how do I push back at this? How do I I say, okay, some, some Muslims may feel this way and they should be able to say so, but most of us, us don't. Can you not teach this as a norm, please? Is this in a, in a, a religious school or? Um... But this is a mainstream UK school. Oh no, oh, that's awful. Um, yeah, that's awful. I, I, there's um, some feminist critiques out there. They're not as easy to access anymore because there's just an avalanche of, of um, pop feminism, like what I would call faux feminism. It's not real feminism to me um, that, that, that thinks that the hijab and the burqa are very empowering. But I would, uh, I would tell her, um, the mother and the daughter, to continue uh, speaking up about this, to, to bring up the many Muslim women um, who have pushed back against the hijab and who have pushed back against the burqa, I would specifically have her look into the the um, uh, Irani feminists who speak about this very eloquently. Um, uh, there's quite a few who have been fighting against mandatory um, uh, cover in in Iran, um, but many of them speak quite eloquently about just um, the general idea behind it as well and why they oppose it as feminists. So I think the, the best way might be to take these authentic brown women and take their you know, uh, reasonings and quotes and, and bring them to, 
to the discussions in the classroom. Uh, you know, it, uh, unfortunately, a- anyone should be able to really speak up and say that I disagree with this and here's why. But unfortunately, we need, you know, uh, an authentic voice, quote unquote, a brown, a brown face, um, someone who's grown up outside of the West to, to say these things. And sometimes that's the only time uh, a criticism will be accepted at all. So I would recommend at least trying that and seeing um, where that goes. Thank you. I, I think, yeah, there, there's there's an added burden on um, on people of, of colour um, to push back at, at various forms of, of this because, because they are regarded as more legitimate, at least in theory, although not always in practice, as, um, no, as you yourself will know. And, and what would you say, just to, to sum up, to how would you advise people who are feeling intimidated and silenced and alone right now? You know, I, there are so, so many of us. I would, you know, I, I hear from people all the time. I think that, uh, I, I think many groups think that there is a silent majority that agrees with them. But I think for, in, us, in our case, the, the polling data, the, what we know from, uh, from opinion polls, um, we know that most people are with us. Most people think that uh, critical social justice uh, theory, critical theory, um, woke um, ideology, that all of that is um, racist, all of that is uh, difficult to understand. It feels um, as if we are going backwards because we are. Um, so I think that if more of us start speaking out, um, hold fast as best as we can, even though it is difficult and there often is a personal price to pay. If you can be, if you can hold fast to um, to your ideals and continue speaking up, I think we'll find that more of us will will stand up. Thank you. Thank you very much for for joining us. It was it was lovely to see you again. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for 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 founding this organization. I'm so excited to see where you guys um, will go with this and how you how you will grow. Thank you for being part of it. <laughs>